And the member for Longman has the call. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Deputy Speaker, I rise tonight to speak to the Private Health Insurance Amendment Bill. And can I begin by saying what a privilege it is to uh, follow the member for Husluck, a, a member of this House who has uh, a great depth of knowledge in this particularly important area of public policy. Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill is twofold, seeking to restrict the private health insurance rebate from being payable on the component of private health insurance premiums with the lifetime health cover loading. The bill also stops direct claiming of the private health insurance rebate through the Department of Human Services, known as the Incentive Payment Scheme, and makes minor amendments to the Income Tax Assessment Act and the Taxation Administration Act to reflect this change. The government says most people claim rebates through tax offsets and eliminating the incentive payment schemes would reduce administrative burdens on insurers, the Department of Human Services and the Tax Office. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, this Labor government has repeatedly promised that there would be no change to the private health insurance rebate. It maintained this charade right up to the 2009 budget when it announced that means testing would be retrofitted to the rebate. The change to means testing, effective from July 1 last year, was a means in itself to prop up the government's sagging bottom line. The move has resulted in savings of $2.8 billion. Likewise, these new changes are nothing but a cash grab aimed at clawing back more than $380 million over four years to help fill the unfillable, a black hole of government debt which has now eclipsed $250 billion. Madam Deputy Speaker, lifetime health cover was introduced by the Howard government on July 1, 2000, as part of reforms that significantly increased private health insurance coverage. It is a loading on private health insurance premiums calculated at a rate of 2 per cent for every year that a person is over the age of 30 when they take out health cover. The cap is 70 per cent. It was designed to encourage people to take out private health insurance sooner rather than later and to maintain their coverage. Currently, the private health insurance rebate is paid on the value of the policyholder's total premium, including the lifetime health cover loading. Madam Deputy Speaker, if this bill were to be legislated without amendment, 1.1 million Australians would face an immediate hike in their private health insurance premiums. And because mean testing has already reduced and in many cases removed the rebate for higher income earners, it is lower income earners who will disproportionately bear the weight of the increase. Half of the 11 million Australians with private health insurance have incomes of less than $50,000. Three million of them have annual household incomes under $35,000. So the circle is complete. The Labor government, after launching attack after attack on private health insurance, has now taken the war to the people who arguably have the most to lose. They are more modest income earners to whom Labor has traditionally spruiked its working class narrative. Madam Deputy Speaker, Labor cannot count on these Aussies battlers anymore. That's because the Aussie battlers cannot count on Labor. As coalition members, Madam Deputy Speaker, we strive to help everyone to help themselves. We call it a hand up, not a hand out. The private health insurance rebate is just such an incentive. In the community I represent, there are a lot of vulnerable people, not particularly well off, who rely on insuring privately for their health, well-being and peace of mind. They include the chronically ill and families who have children with a disability. But private health insurance not only assures them of the best possible health care, it acts as a circuit breaker for the heavily strained public health system. Reducing public hospital pressure is vital if we are, to, if we are truly in the business of delivering optimal care. Last year, a leading doctor from my region hit the headlines for all the wrong reasons. He warned locals that ballooning waiting times at the Caboolture Hospital had become critical. More than half of all Caboolture Emergency Department patients were waiting 52 minutes or more just to be seen. This follows a 2010 AMA report that revealed the hospital was running, on average, at more than 100 per cent occupancy. 85 per cent is considered a safe occupancy rate. According to the Department of Health and Ageing, 600 beds and 52 emergency bays will be required to service the rapidly expanding community by 2026. 
That's basically a tripling of current resources. In this context, Labor's axe wielding on affordable private health insurance is not only reckless, but it's dangerous. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is tragically probable that the outcome of poli policies which force people to drop out of the private health care and push them up against the doors of overflowing public hospitals will end in a needless loss of life. And this Labor government's plundering of health supports in, in our community doesn't stop there. In last year's mid-year economic and fiscal outlook, the Federal Treasurer Wayne Swan stripped $342 million from health funding to Queensland, his home state. Madam Deputy Speaker, when this onslaught began with the then Rudd government's mean testing decision, a staggering 1.7 million Australians by Labor's own omission face reduced private health insurance rebates and therefore higher net premiums. That's around 10 per cent of the adult population. With the means test becoming effective last July, the true picture is worse. About 2.4 million people are directly hit. They must absorb immediate increases in their premiums of up to 14 per cent, 29 per cent or 43 per cent, depending on their income. In the electorate of Longman, Longman almost 50,000 residents are covered by private health insurance have been impacted directly. That's more than 40 per cent of the community. And with no let up in the Labor's demolition of private health insurance, the pain will only mount for those who maintain the ability or strength to find the money for their premiums. It is estimated that the loss of younger health insurance members due to prohibitive costs will increase premiums by 10 per cent. Madam Deputy Speaker, Surely it is a fundamental right of all Australians to expect that they will receive first-class health care. The Coalition believes this is the best achieved by providing choice with affordable access to quality providers. Health is not an ideological playground, nor should it be a forum for social engineering, but that's exactly what we've seen from this approach from Labor. Labor's philosophically opposed to the notion of choice and further fiscally hamstrung by the reality of budget deficit after deficit, its failure to deliver a much mooted surplus, of course, another torn up contract with the Australian people. Madam Deputy Speaker, Labor's dismantling of private health insurance will add even more costs of living pressures to families and shift a more onerous burden to public hospitals as people downgrade their cover. This federal Labor government has proved to be an abject failure in delivering on health. It has added layers of bureaucracy, which have resulted in a detachment from patient, patient care. Labor's administration has been underscored by broken promises on the private health insurance rebate, hospital funding and extending Medicare safety net. And the tentacles of this deception reach back a very long way. On September 23, 2004, the Prime Minister, when then Shadow Minister for Health, wrote in a letter to the editor of the Career Mail that there should be no concern that Labor, and I quote, erode or abolish the 30 per cent government rebate for private health insurance. It's the Prime Minister's words. The Prime Minister, then the Shadow Minister, went on. Labor is committed to the maintenance of this rebate, and I have given an ironclad guarantee that on a number of occasions they would not remove the rebate. On February 25, 2008, the former Labor Prime Minister Rudd stated at a press conference the private health insurance rebate policy remains unchanged and will remain unchanged. And on February 24, 2009, reported the Age newspaper that the members for Gellibrand and then Minister for Health Nicola Roxon said the government is firmly committed to retaining the existing private health insurance rebates. Another broken promise, Madam Deputy Speaker. Yet, for the Coalition, the private health insurance rebate is an article of absolute faith. In government, we will restore it as soon as budgetary circumstances allow. By repealing the carbon tax and reinstating health insurance rebates, the Coalition can and will alleviate cost of living pressures and help return family budgets to good health. After all, Madam Deputy Speaker, the previous Coalition government created the private health insurance incentives that were snapped up by so many Australians. The introduction of the rebates, the Medicare levy surcharge and lifetime health cover saw the number of people with private health insurance leap 75 per cent, from 6.1 million to more than 10.7 million. 
and for everyone else, access to the public system was obviously enhanced. The coalition will restore stability and confidence in vital programs such as the Pharmaceutical Benefit Scheme, which has been afflicted by chaotic policy changes under Labor. We will regenerate general practice, and a coalition government will reprioritise funding from bureaucracies to ensure that clinicians and local boards, and above all, patient care, are at the core of our health system. Households are now paying too heavy a price for Labor's waste, incompetence and failure to control the budget. Madam Deputy Speaker, when you've got major issues of ramping at public hospitals, when you've got issues of bed block and ambulance bypass, you've got to make sure you're doing everything in your power to reduce the pressure. There are a lot of people living on the margins, people who the Labor Party say are well off. But these are by no means wealthy individuals. They rely, they rely on private health insurance for reasons of preference, for security and responsibility. Instead of attacking those who look after themselves, we should be championing them. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker.